Sunday of 2021, y'all. So guess what? We're gonna make it count. <laughs> if you can hear my voice out in the foyer, come on in. We're gonna get ready to worship Jesus together. So good to be together in the house of the Lord today. It's a good day. <laughs> I know it's still a little foggy outside, so we'll probably have some still filtering in as we begin this morning. <laughs> and y'all know we are all about freedom because we're the spirit of the Lord as there is. Oh, we can do better. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yes. And the spirit of the Lord is here. <laughs> Oh, so good to be together. If it's your first time to worship with us here at the church at Benbrook, thank you for joining us. We love Jesus, and we're not afraid to show it. <laughs> we're going to sing loud today. We're going to worship strong today. Like I said, we're going to make it count on this last Sunday of 2021. <laughs> We do three things together when we gather on Sunday mornings. And these are important things that we do because our practice in this room makes it that much easier when we walk out these doors. We need to be watching for God, not just here in this place, but when we walk out these doors, we've gotta be watching for God. He's moving, he's working. We've gotta be asking for Jesus. We've gotta be listening for Holy Spirit. So let's just purpose right now together to do this. We are gonna watch for God, ask for Jesus, and listen for Holy Spirit. Woo. We're gonna watch for God, ask for Jesus, and listen for Holy Spirit. I'm gonna to read to us quickly out of Psalm 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. <laughs> Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. Oh, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. I gotta say that again, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Verse four again says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So we're gonna take just a few seconds right now just to prepare our hearts to enter in. We wanna come into his presence with thanksgiving. We wanna come into his courts with praise. I don't want to drag my feet going in. <laughs> I don't want to carry the heavy stuff. I want to shake off the dust, lay down the weight, and put on the garment of praise today. So let's lift our hands together. Father, right now, we turn our hearts and our affection towards you. Father, right now, we purpose today to worship you with everything that we have. You are the one who's worthy of our praise and we don't wanna miss a single moment to lift you up, to declare who you are, to give you praise. We don't wanna miss a single moment and we want to make the most of the gift of this day to lift up your name, Jesus. Right 
right now, just, just in your spirit, in your heart, even out loud with your mouth, just begin to tell him, I'm going to worship you today. I'm going to worship you today, Jesus. I'm going to give you praise today, Jesus. Yesterday was busy. This season is busy, but right now, I'm looking at you, Jesus. You're the one who has my attention, Jesus. I'm focused on you. I'm going to worship you, Jesus, with my time and my affection. I'm going to worship you, Jesus, today. <laughs> Let's just begin to lift up our voice in this place right now. heart right now, that he reigns over your life. Come on, every circumstance, every aspect, he reigns over it all. Let's sing this out together. You sent the darkness running out of the empty grave. Seated alone in glory, throned on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running out of the empty grave. See it alone in glory, 
throned on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running. Come on. to him this morning.
together in 2021. How we end this year is really important. And I know that we all have circumstances in our lives that are, it can be really hard challenging in so many different levels, hard to understand, hard to make sense of. But what we're doing right now is we're singing these songs, as we're declaring them over our right now, but we're also prophesying them into our future. We're prophesying into tomorrow. 
as we sing these songs. You're the king, you're the center of it all. You're great and greatly to be praised. You always have been, you always will be. Father, today we, we don't want to take lightly what's happening in this moment. We don't want to take lightly the fact that our worship, what comes out of our mouth and declaration is so important. Your word tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And so we want to speak life, your life, into our right now. And we want to prophesy your life into our tomorrow and into the next year that we're about to walk into. Worship is not just something that we do together on a Sunday morning, singing a bunch of songs together. What we do when we worship, we're joining with all creation, both on earth and in heaven. know that we'll ever understand the gravity of that. But we're joining today with everything that he has made, everything that he has spoken into existence. Today we are joining in to give him our worship. What's more is our worship is a weapon. Our worship is a weapon. When we lift up our voices, you don't have to pick up a sword, you don't have to pick up a shield because it's literally impossible to worship Jesus and not sing his word. And that is our worship, that is our warfare, that is our weapon. So as we continue this morning, I just want you to be aware of what's happening in the heavenlies as you lift up your voice, as you engage your physical body in worship, in expression today. It's not just something to do, we're not just filling up time before Lynn comes up to speak. This is what we were made for. We were made for this this one thing and this is the thing that we will do for all eternity but when we do it for eternity we'll get to see him face to face <laughs> so we're going to continue to worship we're going to continue to prophesy into our tomorrow You breathe. 
that all the earth will shout his praise.
sing it. feel like this is one of those moments where, you know, the scripture says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And you may not be able to get down on your knees and if you can't just sit down in your seat, but I believe God's calling us to a point of reverence before him. He is so, so worthy of our praise. He is the one that we call upon for our salvation. He is the one who sacrificed himself, gave it all. He is so worthy to be honored and praised. That's why God gave him a name that was above every name. Every name. Nothing greater. And Father, you allowed Jesus as he rose again and then he ascended back to you and now he sits at your right hand interceding praying for each one of his sons and daughters constantly at the name of Jesus the enemy flees he runs he books it he's out of here now he'll come back but at the name of Jesus he's got to go again God, let us become sons and daughters that instead of trying to engage in the battle and pull it off on our own strength, that we surrender. And we we say, Lord Jesus, I want your strength. I want your power, your anointing. I walk in who you say I am. That I am your brother or your sister. I am an heir to the kingdom of God. And the enemy can't touch me. Because I stand in the authority of who you say I am. Because it's at the name of Jesus. We celebrated yesterday his birth. But Father, let us be mindful. We need to celebrate Jesus every day. Every day. We wake up. Jesus, thank you for opening my eyes this morning. We lay our head on our pillow. Jesus, thank you for walking with me. And if you don't call me home, when I wake up in the morning, I'll thank you again for allowing me to walk with you. No greater name, no more powerful name, no more anointed name than the name of Jesus. Father, help us to be mindful as we begin to enter into really those days where we look ahead and we go, wow, a new year, new hope and everything. Let me just tell you, the hope that will be if we have March 15th is no different than the hope that we have right now on December 26th. Because he is the blessed hope that walks with us and provides for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we don't have to cry out to this thing or that we just cry out Jesus I need you Jesus I surrender to you Jesus I desire to walk with you Father as I read this morning in the book of Haggai it reminds me again what you did with the remnant that when they were confronted with their sin They confessed it, they repented of it, and then they said, Lord, from this moment on, we choose to walk with you and obey you and do exactly what you called us to do. Father, let the remnant that resides at the church at Benbrook be ones that will be known, not for our accolades, but for the kingdom's glory, 
there's a people, their sons and daughters, that take Jesus at his word, at his name, and they stand and they walk in authority. And there's not anything that the enemy can throw in their way that they will not use as a stepping stone to continue to grow and become everything that God intends for them to be. And so we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice and what you did. But let us now acknowledge that we have the privilege to walk with you, the creator of the universe, that says, I want relationship with you. Let's go forth and see me work in and through you in ways you never dreamed or imagined. And so, Father, we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we honor you. Amen. 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 Well, there isn't a whole lot to say after that. But I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. It's offering time, all right? And so we've got buckets on the left side. If you're sitting way over here, and that, we'll let some of our guys, they'll grab it, they'll bring them across. Just thank you, continue, just thanking you for your giving spirit, your gifts, the way God used the church, this body, to bless so many during this holiday season. Just know as you give, it allows us to be able to invest. And I think I shared this a couple of weeks ago. We're really praying through how God wants to use us in the area of impacting people who are involved in ministry way beyond our, our walls. And so we're getting opportunities to do that, to invest in ministries on the other side of the world, as well as invest in ministries right here in Fort Worth and Benbrook, Texas. And so we, we're open to whatever God has for us in that regard. But let me pray for us. God, these gifts, these offerings, I pray your blessings on every dollar that's given that it would be used to accomplish your perfect will for what you've called us to be. Father, I believe you called us to be a church to lead the next generation to know and follow you to know and follow you. And so I pray that we will always be mindful that every investment, whether it's our time, whether it's our uh, money, whether it's our giftings, talents, whatever it might be, should be to point people to you and to help us accomplish the ongoing impact for when you called us home but there'll be generations that will continue to walk it out and walk it out and walk it out. And so, God, just thank you. You're a good, good father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, hey, I want to ask you to stand to your feet as we get ready to read the scripture this morning. You know, sometimes we, after Christmas, in fact, we were... We were sitting with, with our kids yesterday, and you know, with Christmas Eve services, you're like, all day long, and you're like, am I supposed to be somewhere tomorrow, <laughs> you know? It, it's almost like you've already celebrated and celebrated, and the Lord said, absolutely, we get to celebrate the gathering of the body of Christ. But if you have a Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 5. Remember, I told you last week, I'm going to try to slow down, and I'm going to try to move to the scripture instead of light speed with the scriptures because I believe there's something about turning those pages and taking a look. You know, and I remember the preacher who said, all right, I want everybody to turn in their Bible and the little boy dropped his Bible and laid down on it and rolled over. <laughs> y'all, y'all will get that in a minute, okay. Turn in your Bible, you know. Take your Bibles and turn to, that's, yeah. But Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 13. This is what the Word of God says. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You're the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. 
Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone within the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Father, take your word, bless it, help us to live it out, apply it, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. This morning I want to take a few minutes and just, uh, as I thought about Christmas and, and, you know, the celebration of the holidays, so often we go through Christmas and we're like, man, got through that one, I'm done. And I began to ask myself, we really ought to be celebrating Christmas every day. Because what, what does Christmas represent? The birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom had he not come to this earth, we would be, we'd just be miserable people. We'd just be trying to hack it out and hash our way through life. But God loved us enough to send his son so that every day we could get up and say, Lord, thank you for the gift of this day. I want to walk with you today, and I want to experience all that you have for me. You already know what is in store for me, but you're going to walk with me as we walk through the ins and outs of the day, the, the blessings as well as the challenges that might come. And the bottom line is really, when you look at it all, all things work together for good. We know that. And so it's all about God's intentionality in our own life. Several years ago, there was a, the cartoon Charlie Brown, you know, during Christmas time, you always hear the piano thing of the, you know, da 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 you know. I told somebody the other day, I remember the very first Charlie Brown Christmas special when that song was introduced. And yeah, I know, I'm older than some of you guys, but still. But in one of the cartoon captions around the holidays, there, Lucy is coming up to Charlie Brown, and she goes, Charlie Brown, you know what? During this season, why don't we just put aside all of our differences and all of our attitudes and just kind of get along? And Charlie Brown goes, well, Lucy, man, that's a great idea, but why does it just have to be at Christmas? Why not all year long? And Lucy looks at Charlie Brown, and she goes, you think I'm a fanatic or something? <laughs> and so Charlie Brown was saying, wait a minute, we can experience this all year long. And she was like, no, 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 no. We only do it in this segment of time and during this season. I believe God wants us to celebrate Christmas all year long, every single day. That when we get up, it's not about, oh, my gosh, got past that and everything, but a, a spirit of thankfulness. There is no other name. There is no other name who's worthy of honor and praise, especially when you begin to pinpoint it specifically in every person's life. Everyone who said yes to Christ, they may not know how to formally explain it all, but if you sat down with him, you said, tell me what kind of differences Jesus made in your life. They might have to think about it, but eventually they'd be able to begin to speak to, well, I no longer have this struggle, or I no longer worry, or I no longer live in fear like I used to, or I no longer have a poverty mentality that, oh my gosh, the glass is always going to be half empty instead of half full onto the verge of overflowing the way God wants to provide. Well, so when you think about that, Christmas all year long, a couple of questions I want to pose to you. When you think about Christmas, have, have I or have we allowed the commercialization of Christmas to steal the true meaning of this day? Do you remember a couple of years ago when there were several corporations that said, we're not going to say Merry Christmas anymore? We're going to say Happy Holidays? 
and they took a hit because there were people like, well, if that's the way. No, it is about a Merry Christmas because Christmas represents the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not just about another day that I get off work and that I don't have to claim it as a vacation day. Wow. New Year's too, you know, all of that. No, it's, but have we allowed the world to kind of creep in? Do you look forward to when Christmas is over? If you've ever been up till three in the morning putting a bicycle together, you have a tendency to go, I can't wait until Christmas is over. Or that, that toy that the box on the box that says, all you need is a screwdriver. Well, I don't know who came up with those instructions, but they're out of their mind, you know. And that's when we, we were putting something together once, and we were halfway through the manual, and we got to the one page, and it goes, okay, now, put the manual down, go get you a soft drink, and sit down for 15 minutes and take a break, you know. I mean, they were a genius because I was already beating things. You know, I can make things fit. They may not look like they're supposed to, but I can make them fit. And then my, the kids would go to use it, and they're like, uh, Dad, this, this thing's not moving like it's supposed to. Just get over it and ride on it, okay? You know. But sometimes we, we allow ourselves, when we think about Christmas, instead of, wow, we get to sell. And for the believer, it ought to be. But what's happened is the world just slowly and gently creeps in to every aspect if we're not careful, if we're not mindful of that. The Christmas story even. Do we reflect on that? Or has it been, let's tear the presents open. And man, this is all, you know, this is all Christmas was about. But to speak to that, even if it's to pause and pray and think about it. So often we're so busy about the day. And I was uh, telling, telling Becky this morning that yesterday was such a relaxing day with our family. With our kids and our grandkids, and um, just to, yeah, we opened some presents. Deborah Jean cooked about 10 pounds of bacon, and, you know, we had waffles. It was just all good. All the food that you're like, after you finish, you're going like, okay, we won't be eating that kind of food for a long time now. Uh, but it was just peaceful. We've been in them when they weren't peaceful. We've been in them where we traveled 12 hours to get somewhere and then were there for five days and tried to cram three weeks into five days. And then to get back, and when you got back home, you were like, I'm glad we got to celebrate Christmas with family. I'm so glad we're away from them and we're back here now. You know, that, that and God never intended for it to be that way. But we get to choose if we let that filter into our life or if we say, no, we're not going to do that. And so what I wanted to do is just this, this morning is look at four things about how I believe we can keep Christmas alive in our lives all year long. How we can celebrate that. First of all, we need to remember, first and foremost, his personal impact. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5. 17. You may have that verse memorized, but we're going to read it anyway. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. In fact, if somebody has that memorized, somebody just speak it out right now. That's right. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone away, and the new has come. It's gone. But oftentimes, what do we do? We try to keep the old alive in some ways. And when you think about experiencing God's blessings every single day and being mindful, if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for Jesus, we would just, you know, our lives would just be kind of, well, this is what it is. 
But it's that personal impact that God looked down, and as we looked at it last week, made this way, made His way all through Old Testament, New Testament, delivered to us the greatest gift, His Son, Jesus Christ, who would live, die, and raise from the dead so that we could have eternal life. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Take a look at that. It's just a few pages over. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. For he himself is our peace. For he himself is our peace who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Back up to the verse before that. That needs to go with it. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. So if we remember and never forget his personal impact. And the only way that stays alive in us is we have to be in this word. We have to be talking with him. We get to fellowship with him. Scripture says in Matthew, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We think, well, then that means i got to be with two or three people. Guess what? Me plus the Holy Spirit equals how many? Two. And so where we are, the Holy Spirit is working and speaking. And so the personal impact every single day, I challenge you. I'm going to do this this year. I'm not a big journaling guy. My kids gave me a journal. And I thought, well, okay, I, I'm going to have to start writing something now. But just if you just were to journal one thing about every day, God, thank you for this. Thank you. Even if it's every day, it was like, God, thank you that I woke up this morning and there was a new day before me. Thank you that I get to look into the eyes of my beautiful bride, even though she's got four pillows over her head, you know, and she's laying there. I'm like, Debbie, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Be quiet. Leave me alone. Yeah. <clears throat> but the gift that those special to us in our families, remember his personal impact. The second thing is remember your personal commitment. He instigated it. He sent his son. And he knocked at the door of our heart and life. And said, I want to come in and fellowship with you. And spend time with you. And for many of us, he knocked and kept knocking and kept knocking and kept knocking and kept knocking. And finally we said, all right, that's it. I'm going to give up. He's he never going to go away. And the thing is, is his intentionality was I'm not trying to bug you. I'm trying to step in and walk with you and let you experience an abundant life that's beyond anything you could ever imagine. If you're still in Ephesians chapter 2, go over two chapters. Chapter 4, Ephesians 4. I get back over there. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Listen to that last verse. To put on the new self. That's the personal commitment that you and I made if we said yes to Jesus Christ. And it's like we stepped into him. And he and I became one. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And so when you think about the personal commitment. Well, if we want to celebrate Christmas every day. All we have to do is just remember I committed to this. Nobody made me 
say yes to Jesus. And I think sometimes in our world, even in in church world, we have almost done an injustice to the gospel in that we've made it so much of an easy believism. Yeah, well, just say this prayer and you're in and, and then that's it. No, you, that's a beginning door. That's where you open the door up. But once you step in, then you begin to take ownership and responsibility of he is now my Lord and my master. And he's in control. I made that commitment. He didn't make me. He didn't force me to come in, to get in. He'll never do that. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not make you do anything. But he will encourage you and speak into you so that you can experience God's best for your life. But the personal commitment. Remember your commitment. Because then when you begin to put the two, two together, his personal impact, my commitment, that means now I get to walk in alignment with him. And through lordship, that's why the scripture says confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you'll be saved. Confess with your mouth. I believe. I believe, and I trust. All right. I confessed, and now I'm believing. And my belief leads to action. You stop and think about it. Something enters into this mind. There's going to be an action come out of that thought one way or the other. It could be good. It could be bad. It could be to be walk in obedience, or it could be to walk in disobedience to the Father. But if you always are mindful that the commitment was not for him to beat you down, the commitment was for you and I to be able, one day, when the enemy comes and says, you've messed up too much, you can't, you never were one of his, and you said, that's not true, this is who I am, and this is when I may my decision to follow him. I've shared this before, but in at 4841 Park Vista Circle in Dell City, Oklahoma, in that backyard was a stake that was driven in the ground. I should have pulled it up when we moved, but I didn't. There was a stake, and it had January 6, 1977 on it. That was the day that I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And any time the enemy began to say, Man, you messed up again. I'm telling you, you probably need to go and re- get resaved again. You don't have to get resaved. You just take the enemy and go, yeah, I may have messed up. But you see this in the ground? That day I surrendered my life to Christ. And he said, come, my good and faithful servant. I'm going to enter into you, and we're going to walk this thing out together. And nothing on this side of heaven can change that. That's called security. Those whom my Father had placed in my hand, Jesus said, no one can snatch them out of my hand. I love that verse, by the way, in John chapter 10. Colossians 3, verses 19, 9 through, this is going to be a little chunk here, but it's good. Colossians 3, starting with verse 9. Nine through 17. <clears throat> Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with his practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, Do you realize if you said yes to Jesus, you are his chosen people? Peter writes it. He said, you're a royal priesthood. A chosen people belonging to God. Paul writes it right here. God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. And forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ, 
rule, that's it, be in control in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish, encourage one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And whatever you do, I used to quote that verse all the time when I worked with certain people. Because there was people that I really rubbed with. And, and the Lord would remind me, whatsoever you do, do it as though you're doing it unto me and not unto men. And so our personal commitment comes out. And it flows through all these different areas. That passage of Scripture you know, humility, kindness, love. You'll have perfect peace and everything. Forgive. Wow. You want to put the quietus on your walk with Christ? Just don't forgive. Just walk in unforgiveness towards someone. And you can wear this book out, but I'm telling you, it'll be like the straw that here's the thirst buster right here. It's full. I'm thirsty, but I'm squeezing the middle, and I'm, I'm sucking as hard as I can, but nothing's getting through. But when forgiveness takes place, boom, and it flows. It's the same way with our walk with God. A third thing, remember his purpose in calling you out of your lost condition. We looked at these verses last week, Galatians chapter 4. That in the fullness of time, remember those, four through seven. But when the time had, come, had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons, and sons and daughters. Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba. Father, Daddy, so that you are no longer a slave, but a son, a child of God. And since you are a child, a son, or daughter, God has made you also an heir. Romans 8, 17 says we are heirs to the kingdom of God. He called us out. Even when we were under the law that was going to totally and completely condemn us. And one of his purpose was so that we could walk in relationship. Titus chapter 3, verse 7. I have to read 5 and 6 with that. These are, these are great verses. Titus chapter 3, starting with verse 5. And he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Boy, that's enough said right there. His love, his mercy covers it all. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. Verse 7, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Having been justified. You know, I've heard guys preach on justification. And they use the, the phrase, justified is just as if I never sinned. That's what justified is. When Jesus comes into our life, he bore the penalty of our sin on the cross. And when we step into him and we say, yes, the blood of Christ covers over all of our sin. And it's just as if I never, ever, ever did Doing or will do. It's done. It's under the blood. Guys, do you, that's reason to celebrate Christmas every single day of the year. God, if not for you, whoa, would we be? We'd be miserable. But you can't be good enough. You can't come to church enough. You can't serve enough. And you can't give enough to the church to earn your way. It is not earned or deserved, the scripture says. Because if it was, 
we'd be walking around going like, hey, man, <laughs> I gave more than Jake did this week. I got to notch up on him. It, that's not what it's about. It's about surrender, the purpose that he called us out of our lost condition. And then lastly, remember you're a person of influence. You're a person of influence. At the very beginning, we read out of the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, 13 through 17. You are the light of the world. You are a city that's set on a hill. You know, one of the things I love about downtown Fort Worth, I'm not crazy about going to downtown Fort Worth a lot of times, but at night, from a distance, the way it lights up, you can see it for miles. And it's just really, I commented to Debbie, I said, you know, we have one of the coolest downtowns to look at, you know. I'll drive by it. Not necessarily going to drive through it, but I'll drive by it. But from a distance, it just, you can see it. And you go like, when we're at our, our visiting our kids or over in Colleyville, we start way over there, and downtown Fort Worth is over there. And by the time we end up here, downtown Fort Worth is way back over there. But we get to see, and it, it just illuminated out there. And it's like, wow, you are a person of influence. Your life matters to God. He wouldn't have sent a son if it didn't matter. But your life matters to your family members, to your friends, to the people you work with, to the people you don't even know that you're going to rub shoulders with. Your life matters because you're a person of influence. You're the city that's set on a hill. You're supposed to be the salt. The saltiness. And Jesus says, he goes, once the salt's lost its impact, just throw it on the ground. It's almost like, now I mean, we don't, use rock salt to put on food, at least normally we don't, but during the winter, what do we do? You throw rock salt on ice to melt it so you can walk on it. You don't scoop it back up and go, man, I'm going to use that later on my mashed potatoes. You're not going to do that. No, no, it's, it's gone. It's just good to be walked over. But that's what God is saying. That's who you and I are to be. And if we walk in that, and really let the Spirit of God move in our lives and through our lives, there is no telling how many folks that this time, if Jesus hasn't come back or called us home, if this time next year could have been ushered into the kingdom because we allowed the influence of the person and presence of the Holy Spirit in our life to speak out of us and through us to touch them to take the message of hope to them. Every one of us in this room, we know somebody who's lost and on their way to hell. So the question is, what are we going to do about it? Well, you don't know that guy. He probably deserves that. No, every single one of us deserve hell. But God's grace said, you know what? I'm going to make a way. I'm going to be the way maker, miracle worker the promise keeper. I'm going to be the light in the darkness for you so that once you get the light, you don't take the light and go, oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hanging on to this thing. Ain't nobody else going to get this. No, he says, don't hide it. Put it out where everybody can see it. You know, when I think about how much the, the relationship that, gosh, just the depth of that and I was thinking, just last night I was sitting out on the, our patio with Angela, our daughter, and we were just talking, and, and people were doing other stuff. They were watching some football games, but we got to talking about our three grandkids, Cade, Chloe, and Colton, and the difference and the uniqueness of the three of them and how they have different personalities. But Angela said, did I ever tell you the story about when Cade was four and a half years old? I'm driving down the road and he's in his car seat back behind me and just out of the blue and he goes mom I'm sure gonna miss you she's like what he goes 
yeah, I'm really going to miss you. She goes, well, buddy, what, what are you talking about? She was pregnant with Colton at the time. And in, in his mind, that once Colton arrived, that meant he as a son, he had to go somewhere else. And he could no longer be a part because you could only have one son. And she was just like, first of all, she's like, it's grieving her heart. And, and, but she's thinking, where would he hear that? She said, I pulled the car over. I got out of my seat and I got in the back and I looked him straight in the face and she said, buddy, you don't, you're not going anywhere. We're going to be blessed to have two sons in this family. And I thought about that. That, wow. A little mind could think just, well, I'm going to have to move along. I'm going to have to get out of the way to make room for the new guy that's coming in. I'm so glad we don't serve a God like that. That he is a whosoever God. And he says, you know what? I want a bunch of sons. And I want a bunch of daughters. That are going to live with me forever and ever and ever. But until we get to forever and ever and ever. Our job is to live out and celebrate Christmas every single day. Because it represents the one who was born into this world. That in his life, death, and resurrection has made a difference and changed our lives so that other people can begin to understand, oh my gosh, I get to celebrate Christmas every day now because Jesus now lives inside of me and the Holy Spirit guides me and one day I'll get to spend eternity with him. But until that day comes, my job is to make sure everybody I get around knows they can celebrate Christmas every single day of the year and they just don't have to wait for December 25th. Here's my challenge. I believe it's a challenge from the Word of God, and then we're done. God wants us to walk in such intimate relationship. And intimate means where our hearts are so knitted together. We're one with Him so that when I, I don't have to go... Well, Lord, should I? The Lord is always saying, yeah, that's right. Go on over there. That's the one. And we have to get over the stigmatism of what the lies of the enemy have. Oh, well, they may not like you if you talk to them about Jesus. They may, they may turn on you. They may get offended by you. This word of God is going to offend so many people. Because here's the thing. This word definitely is not politically correct this word is thus saith the Lord that without Jesus Christ there's no other way to get to heaven no it's not if we all just believe in God we'll get there and or you can believe in in Muhammad or you can believe in Krishna or Buddha or whatever no Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father and so if we live that out those that are, have been swayed, and we share the message with them, you know what, they may not respond. But if we live the message before them as well, they'll say, there's something different about that person. I don't care what it is. Even when all heck is breaking loose in their life, they still stay close, and they believe God is in control, and he's working in their life. That's our challenge. And so here's what I say. This remnant that meets here, of the body of Christ that meets in the church at Benbrook, I'm telling you, if we will choose to begin to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every single day of the, of the year, we're going to see lives transformed. We're going to see people come to know Christ. But to me, the greatest thing that's going to happen is he's going to do something inside of each of us. And that the realistic view of who he really is and what he desires to be. He's going to work and his little old finite mind is going to begin to grasp the things that it never had before. We know his ways and his thoughts are above ours, but he is constantly speaking into us through his word, through his spirit, 
the Holy Spirit, and through other believers as we become iron sharpening iron to one another. So let's, let's just do it. Let's not talk about it. Let's just do it. God, I'm going to take you at your word, and I'm going to begin to live out. And every day, I'm going to give you thanks for who you are, Jesus, and what you did for me. And now, let me live it out. That's our challenge. When we come back next week, we'll be in a brand new year. Let's put the resolutions in the trash can. Because they never last anyway. Let's begin to determine right now. God, I'm going to begin to walk with you and for you. And as I enter into a new year, if you haven't returned, I wish you would, by the way. But if he hasn't returned, then I want to be a lighthouse for the gospel. I want to be salt that when people get around me, they're going like, dude, tell me what's different about you. Not weird, but what's different about you. And that will open up the door for us. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to be dismissed. And so, Father, I thank you that right now we've, we've come off of celebrating Christmas, and it's real easy now to move forward and go, okay, we're done with presents and all that. Let's get on with life. Father, the fact that we get to celebrate Christmas is what life is all about. It's about the abundant life that was provided for us through Jesus coming. And, and so I, I just want us to be willing and open to experience all that you have for us. I don't want us to end up going, well, I was, I was sitting on the third or fourth row so to speak. God says, no, I want you to come up and sit on the front row because you're going to walk with me. You're my son and you're my daughter. I, I think of, of the, the Proverbs that says, don't desire a place among great people to sit at the table with great people for better it be said by the, the prince whom your eyes have seen. Hey, come on up here. Then that you should be put low before the rest of the group. Which literally says, God says, come, I'm putting you right here at the table with me, and you're going to sit with me, and we're going to fellowship together, and we're going to walk this life out together, and you're going to see me do great and amazing things. It just takes one step. It just takes one step. One choice. One decision. And say, I'm not going back. I will not go back. Holy Spirit, come. Help me dig in on the foundation of Christ so that I can walk with you. Father, let us celebrate your son every single day. Time is of the essence. Jesus is coming back soon. I don't believe he is prompting so many believers around the world with this, this, this sense of urgency. We can't wait any longer. And we can't say, well, I'm going to let somebody else do it. It's not paid staff responsibility. It's the sons and daughters of the kingdom's responsibility. Just let us be found faithful. Let us do what we committed to do. Lord Jesus, I will follow you. I surrender to you. I give my life to you. That means it's yours. However you want to direct it. just a moment as we conclude our service. You may have a prayer need. There may be something going on in your life. We'll have some of our, our team, our elders will be here, our deacons. That, that if you want somebody to pray with you, you may not even know what you want to pray or need to pray, but you just need, God, I just need somebody to pray over me. We'd love the opportunity to do that. And so, Father, as we go forth, I pray your extravagant blessings on your sons and daughters. Let us be found faithful today. Tomorrow will take care of itself if we have it. Let us be found faithful 
today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys for being here this morning.